Okay, my young and the restless fans, we got to talk about today's episode. Sharon thinks Adam is jealous of Billy. Kyle find his mom and dad in an interesting position. Connor is bullied at school and Phyllis goes rogue and reaches out to Jeremy Stark. Welcome back to CBS Soap Dish Recap, where we recap everything CBS Soap, both the young and the restless and the bold and the beautiful. This is your young and the restless recap for December 1st. And without any further ado, let's talk about what happened in Genoa City today. So we're starting out over at society where Lily tells Billy that the conversation went well with Chelsea, especially after he keeps begging to know what happened. He's prodding for more and she's just like, oh, come on. She shrugs. Billy wants to check on her though. And Lily suggests, uh, maybe you think she needs some space or maybe something is wrong, says Billy. And of course, Billy is not happy when he goes off to call Chelsea. So over at Chelsea's place, Chelsea absolutely ignores Billy's calls and flashes to talking to Lily about how she worked hard to be here and that Billy is not the only person who can help her. She has a support system and she worked hard enough to save herself. So now back over at society, Lily finds Daniel, Phyllis, and Summer having dinner. Now Phyllis invites her to dinner, but Lily is waiting on Billy. Now she sits, Phyllis asks about her hotel, and Lily is like, you know, everything's fine. Now Phyllis is giving her the side eye because Phyllis heard that Nate jumped ship and both she and Summer call it justice that he took Sally's job. Daniel questions them. Now Phyllis says she got the job because of Adam. She also heard Billy might be leaving Chancellor Winters. <laughs> Lily smiles and say, yeah, but they're stronger than ever. Yeah, right, Lily. And Phyllis was like, yeah, good PR answer. And she started laughing. Now, over at Crimson Light, Sharon knows Adam wants to be a part of the process of Chelsea's recovery. She can tell he's turning into a contest of who is most helpful of her, him or Billy. Adam clapped back. What am I supposed to do? Step aside so Billy can play the hero? Sharon says, wait a minute, you're turning into something that it's not. And Sharon's just glad that the woman has extra support. But Sharon, that is Chelsea's son's father. So he has every right to know what's going on with Chelsea. Billy is the one that needs to take several seats. However, Adam wants them to work as parents on helping Connor get through this. Sharon understands. She claims she's not taking sides. She's on Chelsea's side. Now, she asked him not to make this about their history, but about Chelsea. Talks turn to Johnny and his sudden interest in talking to her. Probably because Billy is crediting himself, according to Adam. And Sharon thinks Adam sounds jealous. He didn't like that, and so he decides to take off. Now, over at the Abbott Estate, Nikki goes to Ashley to tell her that Talia Morgan is out. And she felt that it was all a smear campaign. Now, Ashley lets Nikki know that if she goes to war with Diane, Jack said he was also going to go war with them too. Now, Nikki is not happy about that at all and gets it if this changes things for her. Will you walk away? And Ashley was like, not a chance in hell. They'll just have to be quiet about it. And Ashley isn't sure if they want to be direct contact with Stark. That's because he's dangerous and it drives Nikki absolutely mad that she got Jack under her thumb. Now, Ashley complains that she had to leave Thanksgiving dinner because she infiltrated their celebration. No, Ashley, you chose to leave. Now, Nikki worries that she'll end up living at the Avid Estate again. 
Ashley was like, uh, that's not going to happen. But since Stark is back, Diane is going to use Harrison and the rest of the family to protect herself. Now, they wonder if Stark will really go after the others if he comes back. Now, Ashley doesn't want that or Diane to be in danger. Now, Nikki says Jack and Victor will deal with the threats. Ashley hates to hand it over to the men, though. So now over at Jabot, Jack tells Diane that he laid down the law with Ashley. Sure you did, Jack. And told her to stop going after her. Now Diane is absolutely touched. It means everything to her. And all of a sudden, she embraces Jack and Kyle interrupts. Now he's wondering what the heck is going on between his mom and dad. But they tell him that Nikki, Ashley, and Phyllis up their attack against her. Now, Diane borrows Jack office to tell Kyle about the deal with Tucker because, of course, she didn't tell Kyle everything. He has another goal, and that is to take over Jabot. Oh, that's what Kyle said. Now, he's not surprised, and she admits that he asked her to find out the company's financial situation, but she never did. Jack appears... They fill him in on the rest. Kyle asks if this really is a big deal. And Diane is wondering what the Three Stooges is going to do with that information now that Stark is out of prison. He's abusive and unpredictable and she's crying. She worries that he'll hurt her and it puts him and Harrison at risk. He got caught for a white collar crime, but that's not all that he's done in his past. Now, Kyle is pissed. However, Jack says, please don't worry about it. We'll protect her. Now, Kyle leaves. Diane asks Jack to lunch. And instead, Jack asks Diane to dinner. So back over at Chelsea's place, Chelsea is staring at the phone and ignores Billy's call. He leaves a message. Connor shows up angry and then Chelsea questions him. He got into a fight at school about her. Someone called her crazy and Chelsea's sorry he ever had to hear that. Some people are just mean, some handle things differently, but she won't justify it. She tells Connor that she has an illness and is getting treatment, but it is a process. Now, Chelsea admits that every family has their own stress and embarrassment and issues. However, bullies zone in on that to goad you into fighting. Chelsea tells Connor that they don't have to fall for it, but Connor asks what if he does if it hurts. Now, she says to talk to her or his dad or even a counselor at school, and she loves him, and then Adam arrives, and Chelsea suggests we need to have a family talk. So, Connor repeats what happened at school to Adam, and Adam goes right to the defensive. Now, he wants the kid's name, but Chelsea calms him down. She sends Connor to finish his homework, and the two of them talk about what to do. And they disagree at first, but she calms him down once again and then they embrace and then she pushes him away quickly to go make a snack for Connor. So over at society, Billy sits with Lily and the others and Phyllis heard that he's leaving Chancellor Winters. They talk about Daniel's pitch and how interested Lily is. Now he asks about it, but Phyllis just laugh and tell him, meaning Billy, you're not privy to that anymore. You left. Now, his mom says entrepreneurship is in his blood like her. Summer is dying to hear about it. And, you know, Daniel has been so secretive. Now, she wants a hint, but Lily stops him. Billy says that, well, I haven't heard of it. Lily hasn't mentioned it. And she sips her tea and says, that's because you've been too busy with other things. Now, Lily goes to take a call. Phyllis and Summer goes home while Daniel tells Billy that he hasn't changed one bit. I'm going to say, man, a lot has changed since I left town. My friend, you have not changed a bit. Maybe what? I'm just saying that you're still the same guy that you were when I left town. All right, well, I'm going to take that, but it kind of sounds like an insult. I'm 
talking about your decision to abruptly leave Chancellor Winters. And you walk out while they're in the middle of this big transition. I don't know what would cause you to make that choice other than, you know, it's just what you, it's, it's what you were. It was like a pattern from what I can remember. And really, I mean, she doesn't seem all that thrilled. Well, how Lily feels is really none of your business. Fair enough. Can I be honest? Yeah. Why stop now? I gotta tell you, I was more than a little surprised when I found out the two of you were a serious thing. Especially after Kane, where that whole mess turned out. I just thought that she would have opted for uh, steadier and more reliable, but his old habits die hard, right? Hello. What did I miss? Well, Lily, what you missed was your ex insulting your current boyfriend. And yeah, he was correct. Old habits die hard. So back over at Jabot, Summer arrives and Kyle fills her in on what Diane says earlier. And yeah, she's skeptical because of what he's accusing of her mom. But with this information, Summer is angry that Kyle agreed to keep that information about the war between the Three Stooges, Nikki, Phyllis, and Ashley against Diane from her. I'm telling you, Summer, this has to stop now. And yeah, he's pissed and he has a right to be because guess what Phyllis is about to do. So even though both Ashley and Nikki seems to want to dial it back with these efforts because this is getting a little bit too dangerous, Phyllis arrives at the Abbott estate and tells Nikki and Ashley it is done. She contacted Jeremy Stark. Nobody wants Diane out of here more than I do. Absolutely nobody. But we have to think this through. What if Star go after Diane and something happens to her as a result? I just don't think anything like that would well, you happen. You can't be 100% sure. What if we push him too far? He becomes violent because of information that we provided. Information, by the way, that might not even be true. We're responsible. Done. What's done? I spoke to Stark anonymously, of course. You spoke to him directly? I did. I told him that it was Diane who made a deal with the feds that ultimately landed him in prison. Two of the three stooges are absolutely in shock because Miss Phyllis Summers have chosen to go rogue to track down Jeremy Stark to scare Diane. But the question is, what have they done? Have they unleashed a dangerous fury on the families of Genoa City? Well, Phyllis, this is all going to be on you. Okay, so there you have it, your Young and the Restless recap for Thursday, December 1st, 2022. If you haven't checked out the bold and the beautiful recap also for today, it has been uploaded to the channel. And into the next video, like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you soon. Bye. <laughs>